Welcome back, people. We're, we're back on, finally. Feels like uh, well, it was 12 months ago to the date that I was driving home when I last spoke to you guys uh, on the way home from New South Wales uh, from the Red Raw, and now I'm, um, I'm heading back up. So little did I know when I was traveling home, uh, speaking to camera that uh, when I when I got there, the, our three-day snap lockdown was going to turn into a whole other year of, of no hunting and no filming. So, geez, it's uh, time has flown, and um, the uh, the good news is um, I'm already over the border. I'm into New South Wales now, and I just got off the phone to Stewie. I'm heading up, joining him for um, probably eight to ten days to see how we go. Uh, and yeah, they've already started roaring. Got some nice cool weather coming in. I uh, don't know what's ahead, so. We, the, the bad news is uh, he just found out that um, unfortunately last year where we hunted we left a few of those really good animals in the hope they grow out. Uh, he just got word from the farmer there was a fair bit of pressure for the uh, locals. They've come in with the bloody government in the wisdom of helicopter, it. So they've shot it via helicopter and left them delayed away. So I don't know, we might find some dead hares or we might just find no animals in there. I'm not sure how um, much of an impact they have on the reds there. Well, it's pretty open country, so I'd say that that'd be pretty effective. Um, there is some other blocks that we haven't explored, which are new to us this season around, so we might get in there and we might pull something out of there. Who knows? It's part of the adventure, I suppose, is going into the unknown. So, yeah, I'm uh, pretty excited to, to get back out, and I know I've been missing content, just like I've been missing hunting. You guys have been missing content, so the apologies about that. Um, I'll do my best to try and get out. I had so many trips planned last year that... It was just uh, devastating not to get out and uh, yeah, for us outdoorsmen being locked up inside, cooped up inside was not good. So, um, kicked a few goals on the home front though, filled up some brandy points and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's time to redeem. So, uh, stay tuned, we'll hit the ground running, we'll get straight into it. Well, words can't describe how uh, excited I am to be finally out on the hill. We've got Stewie, Toby got the good glass and we've got a cracker deer over there he's Stewie's saying 13 points I said he's like 20 so I'm just so excited <laughs> <laughs> like there's the biggest one we've ever seen right there oh uh, we just ranged him 800 meters so I don't reckon he could even hear a call but he's got the girls with him so we've got a couple of hours um, we just come out for the afternoon just have a little pre-scout and um, He's put the binos up and gone see one stag straight away within well, a few minutes out of the car so that's a good start that's a really good start yeah um it's kind of like what happened last time just without so much rain yeah yeah <laughs> yeah we nearly needed the arc last time didn't we <laughs> yeah. so um yeah so smiles all around so far it's early days he's he's kind of up there with um he'd almost be a shooter we think he's a young animal but just throwing a really good head because it's such good conditions so um, I'd love to get a little bit closer. We've got the, the BTX here, which is um, is great for counting off and assessing the animal. Uh, we we can't see too much action just at our feet here, um, just at the moment. But it's it's kind of getting that spot where the sun's really starting to go down. So uh, we this is after the afternoon. We'll, we'll sit here. Um, we're pretty content to just watch and see what unfolds with these guys. And um, who knows? It might be a little piggy or something hanging around. And then um, we're going to go to somewhere new new in the morning, try a new spot. Uh, tomorrow afternoon. Oh, yeah, tomorrow morning as well, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we'll have a look around. They're not, nothing vocal at the moment, but on the way back when it gets dark, we might have a sit wait in the, um, on a ridge line there and just um, see if we can hear any active, active uh, animals. Haven't heard a roar just yet, but um, Stewie heard some action um, last night, uh, woke him up in the morning. So they're about and they're, they're firing up. It's a good start. Oh, the power of the beaver, here we go. Yeah, looks like maybe I'll go back to that other one. She's going to cross. <laughs> Come back here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Right, I was on the road. 
Well, he's left that girl now. Yeah. That's. Oh, yeah. I think I've seen that. See his head going up and down? Yeah. He's thrashing the shit out of that. He's on, yeah, he's on screen now. He's facing kind of left and up a bit. Facing up the hill there. Going back up. Must be trying to find a way through, perhaps. Let him go up a little bit, and then I'll still stop him. Uh, Stewie's doing a little bit of pruning in the paddock, so we can get back through this way. Uh, what a way to open up the hunt. Um, this, um, lots of these properties, there's boundaries that we have to respect on each one, and um, one of the boundaries is a river down below, and that stag we called into about probably 30, maybe 40 metres from that river, so had he come down just that little bit more, he um, would have walked straight into the rifle. <laughs> so that was close. I can't believe we pulled him off that girl that he just um, he just given it to. So yeah, uh, it's really surprising that we tried a few hind calls and then gave him a roar, and he licked his lips and down he came and he was on a dead run. So I think um, our reasoning is that he come down to challenge us, and once he realised we were on the other side of the river probably not so much of a threat and then he he doubled back and went straight back to his girls all out that mountain face so um, we know he's there uh, we didn't fool him today but it's not to say that we won't fool him in the days to come I've awoken to a uh, almost a frosty first kind of really cold frost and uh, got all this wicked low level misty stuff in that'll probably get burnt off when the sun comes up so it's like the perfect morning it's still it's cold it's got kind of cover I can actually hear one even from here going we haven't even left camp so we're gonna have a quick cup of coffee and get into it well, we're heading over to a um, an opposing face with a bit of timber at the back of it where Stewie yesterday um, counted off eight deer and one pretty good stag with them um, but as he left, the deer headed off in the bush and on the back side of that, a chopper came over and opened fire. So we don't know if they're all shot, maybe displaced or or they evaded that chopper. So I thought we'd just come and have a look, see if we can see them this morning. And um, so far no action, but we're going to move in a bit closer and see if we can see any animals, perhaps even down animals. Uh, I'll give you a look at the face over here. What have you seen? Yeah, got I think there's four pigs up under a, a fruit tree up on the, oh, up on the ridge up there, there. Yeah, way yep. up there. Yep. yep. I'll I'll I think there's the, four of them. We'll get the camera out and see if we can get a bit of footage. Well, we've changed sides. We left those pigs now. Um, we've come over to a different aspect. But uh, we could hear, we, when we first came down, we heard two stags roaring. We've given out a call and no response. We can't get eyes on them. Um, it's definitely quiet, the sun's coming up pretty nicely now, there's still a few kangaroos sitting out sunning themselves. The deer have gone quiet pretty quick this morning. Might um, we'll give it another 15, 20 and if there's no action we'll go back and have some brekkie and replan the afternoon. Uh, it's 5.40, we're heading back up the hill, uh, we're going to see if we can um, catch up with those roaring animals that were in here yesterday. We come up a little bit earlier. There's uh, one that we didn't get a look at. We'll see if we can catch up with him. We've got a roaring stag over there. <coughs> Stewie says it's probably the same one yesterday. It's like a 10 pointer. We heard one back over here. But he's gone quiet. We're gonna drop down and get to the same level as them. Don't know if you can hear that, but that's him. Just heading along this trail here and you can see a footer really nice. 
opposing alley to look at over there. And that's the one Stewie's on the ridge of. You can see down into here and it's about down in here where I last heard that. Well, I think I heard that stag in here somewhere. Well, I've just noticed a heap of roos just all got pushed out. And they've all come up and they're all looking down in there. So he might be moving. I'm on a pretty good game trail here. And um, if Stewie's disturbed this deer, maybe this deer is, but um, there's quite a few of them in there. They're pretty relaxed now, they're having a little box on. I've got a pretty good setup here. Um, I've got Stewie coming down the face and he's got a roaring stag um, above me over on that angle there and you can see that spur he's out on there he's gone quiet for the last 15 minutes but I haven't heard from Stewie either so he might be um, filming it I had one little murmur somewhere down here I don't want to push too hard the wind has stopped now soon this um, sun will warm the earth and and all of the thermal will really start to kick up. So right now, without the wind, my scent is staying here or even drifting down. So I don't want to push in too early. And we can see the sun coming up. So this is um, this is a good little spot to sit because I've got like four different gang trails and a bit of an anomaly in the land here. So I'm just going to wait here and listen and give Stewie a chance to get in on that and um, not disturb any other animals like kangaroos and whatnot that might stuff his hunt up so um, not much um, not much on the ground here not many footprints a little bit of droppings but not not heavily tracked out so I'll sit here sit tight for maybe 20 minutes and then I'll, um, I'll try and move in from where I last heard that animal. He might have bed it down over there. Let's see how we go. So at this point, these two hinds had walked pretty much right up under my feet. So I was sitting still, they didn't know I was here, but if you listen carefully, you can hear all those birds, all those carawongs. So she was intently looking down the hill in the direction where I thought that stag was, and I dare say he was disturbing all those birds. At this point right here, she's maybe six to seven meters from me, so I think she's getting a little bit of a whiff here, but she wasn't too phased. And, um, and I just let them be and they walked down towards, uh, down towards where I thought that stag was hanging out. Just heard five shots ring out from over that way. That's where that other stag was roaring on that other property, so someone might have got lucky. Be a bit of a pink cushion though. Big time, gooey eggs. I heard that one down there again, it's still there. Haven't heard from Stewie or that deer up there. Thermal starting to just lift now, so another five minutes or so. I'm gonna make a move. See if I can get eyes on this one. Why the mermans and everything he's doing very half hearted. I reckon he's sitting down there somewhere. It's getting very, very quiet now that wind's gone, so it might be tricky to get through this crunchy stuff to him if he's sitting while I'm moving. But we'll try. So I can kind of see that Stewie's now on the same line, contour line as me, so he's got my same elevation. So if that animal is down in between us now, and I make a move and I get busted, it's very likely going to run up towards him. So um, I'll pack up 
this out pocket here and I'm just going to go pretty much straight into the wind in his direction. Um, back on the move, I reckon um, I'll use this bit of time to go and um, drop down on this creek and see if there's any wallows or anything because that doesn't make sense to me that one I smelled earlier was under those hinds. I reckon I've made that mistake before thinking the stag was lower gotten down there and I was stalking a wallow I might just double back it had a really strong pungent pungent odor to it so it's good to know if there is um, a wallow down in there uh, I might be able to stick a camera on it so I'll drop down here have a little scare around you never know might even find some carsies down there so I've come to an interesting part down here uh, unfortunately most of the rivers um, from when I was younger I used to be able to walk along a lot of the rivers and now the rivers and creams and tributaries are all choked with blackberries and they just create massive walls that are definitely impassable by humans and the critters do get through in some places but every now and then you know, I've just got two massive walls I've got a really good game trail and pretty much that entire system over there funnels down under that log and along that game trail there so that's a major, major choke point for any animals that want to cross from this system to that system or get down to the river on this side. So I'm going to sit here, it's probably the middle of the day, not much is going to happen, but um, I'm going to mark this spot for future reference because in the morning, if we're on one side or the other and something tries to evade us, no doubt we'll take this low track here. It's the most tra traffic I've seen on the whole face. Uh, so yeah, pretty red hot this one. All right, it's been an hour or so. I'm still sitting on this spot and um, there's been absolutely no action, which is to kind of be expected middle of the day. Stewie's just come on the radio. He got in on that stag. He said it's a young 10 pointer um, with two hinds bedded there. So not a shooter, he's left that and he's gonna head back up. Um, I'm gonna head back up this side. I did smell that stag up there. So there's still a chance we might bump into him up in the back of this bowl, but um, they'll definitely be sitting down by now. So. We'll go back to camp and um, it's pretty much going to be a lunchtime cook up and um, we'll relax for this afternoon and, and make a new plan for the afternoon hunt. Just up the bottom off the creek here and uh, a couple of good gouges in this one. The red deer really give it a good crack, check that out. It's like, it's got to be, you know, 15 mil thick or so, I think. <laughs> they don't go as high as the samba, it's only it's actually quite low. It's only probably um, underarm high there, whereas the sand we can go you know, a lot taller and try and get that scent up a lot higher. But yeah, it just looks like pure aggression there. Good little gully on this side, it's um, down by the creek there, it's all green and it's a lot, lot, lot windier now though. Well, I don't know about you guys, but pretty much 12 months in lockdown. Um, and being off the mountain certainly taken its toll in terms of fitness no matter what I did at home uh, it just doesn't care doesn't you know compare to getting out in the mountain with a backpack on for fitness so it's gonna be a long road back to where I was if I can get back there uh, hopefully no more lockdowns ahead so we can keep it up throughout the winter coming. Yeah, it's definitely my preferred style of exercise, that's for sure. It's early morning. I'm round on the face where I saw um, that good stag yesterday where he wouldn't come through in the hope that through the night he's come over to feed in the paddock. So I'll try and get down in position before we get too much daylight and see if I can catch him out in the open.
Oh, called in the wrong one. Young Spike came in. That big boy's across the river. He's just on the other side there with some girls. I've got a glimpse of him. I'm trying to roar at him. He roared once back. Now he's gone quiet. I might just sit tight here for the morning and see what happens. There's a lot of scent on the ground here, so... As that spike, did a full circle. And he went through the line that I walked and still didn't catch my scent, so... It's a bonus. I just saw that young spike cross the creek just down below. So that's good, because now I know. I never knew where that cross. So now I know where that crossing is. Um, that's a big help. If not this season, maybe next season, to know if I'm calling where they should cut and where they should cross. Well, I think that's me for the morning. I um I saw a fellow buck in there as well, a pretty ratty one. I think I'll wrap it up in here and head back to camp and have a cook up. Um, Stewie ended up staying uh, at home last night. He's moving house. Um, so he should be back today at some stage. Well, I'm almost to the top of the hill and I just got a glimpse of that stag. He's a bit upset. He's lost all his girls. He's gone way back, way out of bounds now on a neighbouring property and he's standing out there in the paddock, roaring his head off. <laughs> and um, I can see all the girls are down here. So at some stage he probably will come back down. I'm surprised that he left them. They must have maybe got a bit of wind to me or not sure, but he knows he's safe back there, so. Yeah, um, that's me for the morning. I'll just give you a quick look at this pack um, while I'm here. Um, this is um, something that I'm really proud to be a part of. It's uh, in, the, in the background now um, for about two years. Rob Fickling from Roker 30. Um, myself, I have a lot of input on this pack. Um, he's designed from the ground up, so it's, um, not like our other packs where they're an integrated frame. This one's an external frame. So there being the frame is fitted to you and then you can choose your pack to go on the back. So we're launching with a 30 series pack and a 70 series pack, obviously being the leaderage, 30 liters and 70 liters. Um, they're slightly bigger than that. And um, there's also an integrated meat shelf, um, which uh, you saw a bit of footage with the orange bag that you can put your meat in that's specifically designed around a big samba stag leg that um, we molded and then we've, we fitted that to it. So uh, it's also got this kind of proprietary um, quick release weapon system. Um, we've measured um, the felt weight of a four kilo rifle on your shoulder and it, it basically reduces it by 75%. So it's very, very comfy. Um, you just kind of two ways, you can do it nice and quiet and, and click it off here to get it out or you can just pull that rip cord and she comes out and you're up and ready to go. The beauty of this system is that you can put it back in, unlike a lot of other packs out there on the market, you can put it back away without having to undo and take your pack off. Um, I find that really annoying with some of the other systems I've used. I'll do a really big in-depth um, kind of review of this and, and break it all down with all the bits and parts, uh, bits and pieces um, back probably back at home where I can kind of show you on a mannequin um, but yeah that's the this is the day bag so this is the 30 series pack it comes in camo the other one's black and olive and uh, the fitment we've got a carbon fiber um, it's super lightweight we've got a carbon fiber back plate with two aluminium powder coated risers and that's kind of the sweet spot we found between your, your body mechanics where it will move with your body and the rigidity you need so that um, that load bearing goes down to the center of mass where you want it. So yeah, there's lots of really good tech in this. Um, everything from the heat mitigation that's been put in it, the, um, the foam that doesn't hold any water, uh, doesn't stink up and get sweaty. Um, this is definitely the coolest pack um, I've ever worn, um, hands down. Uh, and the fitment, um, it's something that you come in and you get fitted and it's the frame is fitted to you specifically. The other one is rolled to shape. Um, there's about 12 different adjustments that can be made into this pack to just get that custom fit which gets the load as close to your spine as possible which is a really really neat feature but anyway um, as I'm filming this it, it'll be going live on the Roker 30 website so hop on over and check it out and um, yeah leave any comments in there if you've got one or if you've seen one or you've got any um, questions definitely put in the comments below and, um, and I'll try and get back to you 
Um, otherwise, yeah, keep your eyes out for the for the next review on that one anyway. All right, I'm off to camp. Um, Bricky time, and uh, hopefully catch up with Stu again. He's been um, MIA. <laughs> See you, folks. So I had a little explore along the creek on the way back to camp and um, spent most of the day just hanging back there. But it uh, got the better of me. I thought I'd better head back out for the afternoon and um, set up a sit wait, see if we could get eyes on this stag again. So I'm just working my way through these blackberries and I've just pushed a fellow and he just gone down in that stand of um, bush there. I think it's still down there. On this place, they say if you see the fellow, shoot him on sight, they don't want him here. So if I can get a shot, I'll take it. with a 7 mil rim bag, and so I didn't go far, about 4 or 5 metres. Just give you a quick look at the point of impact, point of impact here, that good blood, and then, um, absolutely no mistake in that, there's, um, here's the old lung tissue, and then um, that's where he kind of flipped over, so yeah, absolutely devastating on the head here. Trust the old eagle hawk and it again. So with this pack, you can see it holds two fellow legs, no worries. It's designed for a samba leg, so that's your meat shelf. That's obviously on the frame. And then your bag <coughs> is simply you see it's still attached at the bottom lay it over the top like that and then use the cinch points and clip it down and that will sandwich the meat between you and the frame so there we are you can kind of see obviously shoulder side of the pack sandwich the meat shelf in there and um, then everything stays secure you're not gonna worry about it falling off the back and have to rearrange once you're heavy and you're packing out kind of thing so um, I've done pretty well I've still got a little bit of light left um, I'll start packing this up to the car and um, head back for some dinner. Happy days. Well, you can see there, if you look at the pack when it's loaded, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's nice and balanced. Um, still got your rifle carrier here. So if the inevitable happens and you have to get it out quick because you're on the way back and you want more, <laughs> and then you don't have to take your pack off to put it all away. So I'll do an in-depth review of this system and all the bits and pieces at a later date. But for now, uh, for the guys that would have seen this on the last video and were asking a few questions, um, this is the final kind of stage, the 30 series pack on this one for day hunting. And it will be, as I speak, it's um, going live for sale. So by the time we get back and edit this, uh, you will be able to purchase it from Roka 30. Um, all right. I am about to punch back up the hill and then go back and enjoy a hard and beer. <laughs> See you back camp. Well, Stewie did end up coming into camp that afternoon, so we hatched a plan to uh, get up early and try a new spot in the morning. See, it's quite good bush in here, you can get a good view. But, um, wind is perfect. Just taking it over back behind me. So really, really good conditions. It's a little bit um, dry underfoot, but you can be quiet enough. There you go. There's a roaring stag. Don't know if that came up on the microphone.
Zerg. So I think he wants us to challenge him and come there. It's very thick between us and them. There's a creek down there with some blackberries. So I really want him to come to us. So I stayed right on the heels of this bike that was ground sending and what happened next will stay with me for a long time. It was an amazing experience to say the least so I'll just let this uh, bit of footage roll and you can enjoy it as I do. Mm -hmm. 
So as I'm filming this guy, I can actually hear the more dominant stag just over the crest, still roaring and murmuring. And uh, knowing that he's got the gills, I really wanted to get eyes on him. So uh, this guy eventually fed off and then I had to pick my way through the group of spikers to get over and get eyes on him. Flown away. So we had a spindly 10 pointer runoff, which I didn't get the film on. We had the spiker that was being a satellite, and we had that, um, I reckon it was a 12 or maybe a 13 point that came right in close. And I could still hear the other one going, so I figured there's a more of a mature stag over here. And then you saw him come across with those girls, so same thing. I'll have to get on the big screen and have a look, but I reckon he might have been a a 10 to 12 point but just bigger and stronger you know um good looking animal but still not quite what we're looking for there is some ripper reds up here and for most guys i know that's a, a trophy for someone and um there's stewie's coming up behind me here oh i know we've got a wallaby coming down <laughs> it's all happening this is fantastic love it finally back in the bush how good is this sun's coming up I'm loving it. This is um, right in my element. I'm going to sit here and um, crack a googie egg and have some breakfast. How'd you go, mate? Good. Tell me a story. Well, as per usual with a scenario like that, it's way more dynamic than what a lot of people think. Well, when well, I, I came over, I was heading to one stag. I was thinking one stag, and you said to watch out, he might have a spiker or so with him. So one spiker, three stags. Yep, so it's very, very dynamic. And um, yeah, a lot of people don't realise the actual, the whole thing that's happening. You might, yeah, like you said, you can hear one stag roaring, but usually there's, you know, a lot more happening. I was, um, you know, to a young hunter, I almost, I would almost say for sure that you would have shot that first one that came over. And, and that would you would have thought that was it. That was the end of the story. Yeah. Yep. And um, and unbeknownst to you, there's a better animal just over the ridge. Yeah. Um, and you, this morning, um, where we headed off, we actually one was sounding off quite quietly, 
and he was doing that yesterday and we didn't get eyes on him today and we didn't get eyes on him this morning now he um he shut down early so we came over here because we could hear the vocal and Stewie was um his theory was spot on that he's getting heckled by some clingers on so um it made for a great stalk this morning i had i got the adrenaline going i was like oh what's going to come over here this could be a bomber bomber um animal over this but it's good to see that they're in here and the up and coming ones are still even with all the helicals and everything that's going on there's still good opportunities here in the forest awesome stuff let's have some brekkie well i packed up my stuff and uh i did get another look at the um the big boy before i went so he survived and um it's good to know that he did pick up all his girls and he will be spreading those genes around for another season so hopefully see you next year buddy take care well what an awesome trip that's been it's come that time to say goodbye folks so um thanks for tuning in and I'm glad to have shared. We didn't get that big stag this year, but we did get to share uh, all the experiences and take you along for the ride. So that's all a trophy in itself anyway. The uh, freezer's full, so smiles all around. Stay safe out there, guys. Happy hunting. I'll see you in the bush. Eru.